The following stream contains mature content and subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. As often happens, it was love that led to our imprisonment. And for our love, we were consigned to an empty void, barren of anything except our failures until the end of time, or so we thought. Now our prison is failing, and we are emerging into a world that has forgotten our sacrifice. But we can never forget. And so, with the morning star spotted in the skies above Los Angeles, we have come. Did we endure millennia of damnation for a world that has become so sterile, so heartless? Or will we remember we were once angels? We created this world, and perhaps, perhaps, we can make it and us all again. <laughs> and good evening, everyone. Welcome to McStaver Studios' Demon, The Road to Hell. I am the storyteller of this bunch of damn cretins here uh, Cretons. for tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chaos Goblins. I am Mama McStaver, and I am playing Arizeth the Scourge, who had possessed Virginia Waugh. Hi, I'm Maddox, and I'll be playing Clark Miller, who possessed Carcidor... The Malefactor. Hi, I'm Mischievous Red. I'm playing the boss, the fiend, who possessed Alice Elizabeth. Uh, hi, everybody. I get to play, uh, I'm the Ronald Sarkhan, and I get to play Tyrenthrazel, the devourer who took over Matthew Greaves. Hi, I'm Cozy Core, or Unconscious Celestial, and I am playing Drulario the Slayer, who possessed Michelle Mars Porter. So, Last week, this group met with Usul, the Reaper Souls. Had a nice long discussion, though it didn't get violent, close. And then he's they. He's so testy. He's, well, he's <laughs> who he is. And then uh, you all had the great fortune to meet with the Morning Star himself, Lucifer, who. Seems to have plans that involve killing everybody. And one of you, Tyrem Thruzel, uh, had his true name invoked to hold him in place because he was trying to get a little bit too froggy. Oopsie. But as we open up tonight, it's actually the next day from the events of last episode. Uh, I think, let me roll to see who goes first. Uh, actually, I know who's going to go first. Alice, what are you doing this night? Uh, yeah, so she's probably going to go uh, people slash demon watch at the club that Molly owns. Okay. The kingdom. Now, I will warn you, uh, there's no easy way to tell who's a demon or not unless they use their powers. No, I know. But you can... But she just, she's just going to... Sit, maybe use some power, or maybe like send some congruence. You know, we'll see. Okay. So we'll come back to you on that one. We'll leave that right there. That works nicely. Uh, next up, 
Tyrem Threzel, your plans this night were to go meet with Baroness Kishar. Is that correct? You are correct. Okay. Uh, she's arranged for you to uh, speak with her actually down in downtown. Uh, let me find the exact place I want to put you at. Um, oh, not the stadium again? No, not the stadium again. Um, so she's not a creature of habit. No. Uh, oddly enough, noted. she wants to take you to the... Uh, the music center, which has the three theaters, the Dorothy uh, Chandler Pavilion, the Amstan Theater, and the Mark Taper Forum. Okay. Yep. First time being there, so I'll, I will try not to act like a tourist. And you see her there before you even arrive. I mean, she's maybe barely five foot tall, got away 90 pounds soaking wet, uh, but there's still that presence she has about somebody's elderly grandmother who works no fucking shit from anybody. Go up, bow my head. Baroness. Matthew? Now, you felt the presence? Yes, I think we all did. It caused quite a stir. By the time anyone got there, though, he had already left. I was there. What? He was there when I was there. You do remember my commandments that if Lucifer is seen, I'm to be told immediately, correct? I couldn't do anything because he froze me in place. He used my true name. He did? And what, pray tell, did you do to cause him to do that? I, I tried to attack him. Let me make a roll for her. What she got? Yeah. I Let's can't see. lie. So. Hmm. This little woman gets right up to your face. You did what? He said some things I didn't agree with. Couldn't agree with. I lashed out. Um, before I could think. He is our Lord. The first of us, and you dared, no matter what he said? I, I came to my senses. And You're lucky he didn't slay you where you stood. I would have. He didn't have his spear with him, so I assume that's why he didn't. He retaliate. always has that spear with him, whether you see it or not. That spear is a part of him, is the rest of his body. You're right. He chose to spare you. I think you should feel lucky for that one. What did he have to say? When is he coming to lead us? When is he taking his rightful place on the throne? About that. Uh, he doesn't want to come back. She gets a look on her face, part disbelief, part disappointment. He told you that? He said he didn't want the pressure. He doesn't know if he could lead us without making the same mistakes he did before. <laughs> he says that like he has a choice. 
He has to lead us. There's no one else. Why would he have a choice, though? He's one of us. He's on Earth. He's not one of us. He was never in the prison. When all others lost faith, we didn't. We just have to prove ourselves that we're ready to pick up the mantle of war and we won't fail him a second time. He doesn't want to go to war. None of us wanted to go to war. Who seemed to want to go to war pretty hard. Baroness, no insult intended. I want to finish what we started. I want to cleanse the stain that came upon us at our defeat. I want to restore the glory that we were with him on his throne as he should be. Master of us all. The host is gone. Really? We don't have anyone to war with. Just because we don't see the host doesn't mean they're gone. They're hiding, waiting for us to be complacent. Uh, sorry, to tell, I don't remember this off the top of my head, but w was I told about the mages' avatars being shattered piece of the host? No, no one has told you that yet. Okay. Just making sure, because I didn't want to say something and be like, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, Lucifer said that his, he released one of his generals and that it was a mistake. possible but that doesn't change things look the archdukes were always barely controllable even during the initial start of the war hell the, the legions fractured they broke apart of course it, he thought it was a mistake. He didn't have his legion to back him up, to bring them back to heal like he did the last time. But with us united under his leadership, we can put them back where they deserve, in their place. And we can finish the war. Isn't their place to lead? Their place is to serve Lucifer and to do what he says. That was the reason we brought the legions back under heel. It's been done before. We'll do it again. And in unified once again, we can find where the heavenly host is hiding pull them out of whatever bolt hole in the universe, this vast place we've created and cast them down into the abyss like we were and take our rightful places as rulers. What if Lucifer is right, though? You said he is the first among us. It's a what test. We have to prove worthy. Come on now, you know this. But what if his time here changed him? You can't have changed him that much. We haven't changed that much. We could take his path. Are you doubting his rightful authority? No, I saw it. I, I felt it firsthand. It's 
So all we have to do is pass his little test here so he will come back and lead us to show we haven't lost everything. I worry because he has the Reaper of Souls feeding him. <laughs> he subverted the Reaper of Souls. Now that should tell you more than enough to understand that he will take his place. I think you need to have faith in the Morning Star. Don't lose that. You held on to it for so long. Don't, don't abandon him now. Don't become like the others. No, I, I, I think more than ever, I am, I see now what his path is. And what is that? He's the first. Like you said, he has a place. Tell me, tell me, Tyrem Thruzel, are you turning your back on the Morning Star? Not at all. Good. This legion has no place for those who doubt what we're doing. Correct. Remember that. I have not changed from what I was during the war, nor have the rest of us. Betrayal. Betrayal always exacts a price. I don't think he will appear to us again. We may come in contact with the Reaper of Souls again. If he swear, serves Lord Lucifer, good. Lucifer will appear for us again. Oh, I, I meant for me and the people I'm helping. I hope he appears to us. He did it once before. Appeared above this city. He'll do it again. He knows his path when the time is right, when we're worthy, when humanity needs him. He'll appear. I have faith in that. I've never given up on him. And I never will. Thank you for your time, Baroness. Mm, well, thank you for yours. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a, somebody waiting for me. In the theater, we're to watch the show together. Of course. And she turns and goes into the, the building. But I will say, as you're leaving, uh, you recognize Jeffrey Black's car in the parking lot? Okay. The same man she met with outside the stadium before. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And now, Erezeth, Carsador, and Drulariel, uh, you all 
are going to meet with the head of the reconcilers and the minister of dust, Vahumano. He's given you an address in West Hollywood. It's a bar. And he's told you to meet him there. Name of the place is uh, uh, it's on the Miracle Mile which is uh, uh, it's more of an urban decay rather than the, the affluent part of West Hollywood. It's also right in the middle of Boys Town. Sort of assuming we all carpooled. Oh, yeah. And the name of the bar is the, the White Rooster. Make it that what you will. Is this a gay bar we're going into? <laughs> it is West Hollywood. I know. Boys Town. I know. <laughs> Will that be an issue? No, I don't really care. I'm just not the general clientele and neither really is Mars here. I don't think any of us will have anything to worry about. None of us have gender. Oh, sure, the husk that you crawled into <laughs> when you got here has gender. But we and Carcador Jesters I know, don't. but... Okay, Clark. <laughs> Mars is just sitting there chuckling. <laughs> Lord help me. <laughs> no, I think they've done plenty already. Let's try someone no, else. No, I'm pretty sure they have. So, yeah. So you all head to West Hollywood, to the Miracle Mile. And uh, the white rooster, I mean, it just says right on the front, the white rooster has a picture of a rooster all in white. Uh, there's there's a joke to be made here with this, the symbolism of it. Yeah. Yeah. But the windows are all uh, heavily tinted to the point where you can't see yeah. in from the outside. Do we walk in and hear the Blue Oyster Club music? <laughs> no. Um, actually, it's Raining, it's raining men. men is on when you come yeah, in. Yeah, I fucking knew it. And raining Men. <laughs> and the place, it's not packed, not this time of day. The music's not very loud. Uh, there's about 20 people in it. Uh, all men. Mm -hmm. All of them. But as you're stepping into the place, uh, nothing immediately jumps out at you until... A small man, uh, he appears to be Asian ancestry. Your, your guess would probably be Korean. Uh, slight of build, but very wiry. Looks to be in his early 20s. And he saunters right up to you. And there's a, a grace to his movement that's hard to place. Nobody in the, the rest of the place seems to pay him any mind at all. Hmm. Uh, you look different than the normal clientele here. <sighs> His ac He's got a heavy accent. I'm not going to attempt to do a Korean accent. I'm not going to insult the Korean people with me trying to do a Korean accent. I would presume we probably are different. Are you his meeting today? Yes. I'm Robin. I'm a friend of his and troubleshooter for him. Oh. Huh. He's in the back. Follow me. Mm -hmm. And he moves. As he's walking back to the back, you realize what his movement is. It's the grace of a, a predator. Little wiry Korean man, but this man moves like he can. Uh, something about him makes you think he can fight. And as he leads you back, he knocks on a the door. They're here. And there's a, a voice. It's a pleasant voice. It's a little bit higher pitched than maybe you expected. But it let him in. Yes, sir. And he opens the door. 
And inside, seated behind a desk, there's a man. I mean, he cannot look more than 19. Hair is so blonde, it's almost white. Slight build. His skin is an alabaster or shade of white. I mean, if he looked at the sun, he would end up burned. And he's sitting behind a desk and around the room are signs that, you know, gay rights are human rights. And, you know, discrimination is bad. And he's, they're, they're stacked up around the sides of the room. As he stands up, ah, good to meet you. Uh, I'm Jonathan Freeman. Virginia Waugh. He shakes your hand. Mars just has this super big grin on her face. Hi, I'm Mars. And just actually like goes in and gives him a hug. I, he gives you a big old hug back. Whoa, I like him friendly. That's nice. Thank you. Clark Miller. Clark Miller. Hi, Keen. It'll be all. And the guy at the door nods, closes the door, though you can hear him taking up station outside the door. He's one of us. Don't worry. Mm. A friend of mine from the war. Mm. Uh, anyone who wants to roll legacy can go I ahead. I am going to right now. Sure. Why not? Probably won't be anything, but I'm going to try. Go ahead. Difficulty six. You now have, if you look under knowledges, you have a legacy under knowledges. You can click and then difficulty will be six. Set it to intelligence and then roll. Makes it nice and easy. <laughs> Man, Virginia is not on a roll tonight. Nope. Clark got two. One's enough to get some basic info. Shit, Mars. Very nice. Five. For Clark and Erezeth, uh what you remember of Vaho Mano during the war, uh, he was a monster and a half. Uh, you remember he used music to break the enemy. Mars, uh, he, you also remember he was not only used his music and he was a monster, he was actually one of the prime torturers of the Ebon Legion. And once he was in the abyss, he became even worse and used his music to torture his fellow fallen in the abyss. Uh, as far as you know, this is regretting that hug. <laughs> it's assumed he was always well. Everyone in the abyss thought he was a redeemer or a uh, ravener. Yeah, as it slowly dawns on Mars, her smile just kind of dims a little, but she's trying to not let it show that she remembers. Um, I'm glad to see you all come to see me. Uh, you didn't have to. I'm nobody important. I mean, the Ministry of Dust and all, but I'd have reached out to you, but I'm kind of embroiled in a bit of a war. So I'm kind of, I have to check people out before they can meet with me directly. Did we check out? Yes, you're definitely not working for uh, him. <laughs> I don't want to say his name, but he's in charge of one of the other parts I, of the court. I've heard some things. Yes. Yeah, he's in charge of the Ministry of the Uruk. Mm. Him, he's been taking pot shots too much at me here lately. Why? Difference of opinion in many ways, I think. Uh, please sit down. Let me. I don't want to stand here talking. I prefer to sit. And he goes and and sets down, kind of almost. He sets himself in there, but you can tell by the way he's setting. He's very comfortable behind his chair. Mm -hmm. It's it. Uh, philosophical differences, you could say. He doesn't believe that I've changed my my stripes, to put it in simple terms. Mm -hmm. Seems to think this is all a game I'm playing. It resents the fact that I noticed the Lord of Murder was pushing into West Hollywood, and this is my area. I'm, that's not going to happen. So. For someone who complains to, or proclaims 
they're in charge of defensive strategy. The fact that I not only had to recognize and eject an earthbound from my area hasn't gone over well, especially because he considers me, uh, I must have done it for because I was working with him, of all fucking things. All right, so he's a coward, and he's trying to use you as a scapegoat. Got it. He's just too caught up in what he was. You know, unfortunately, we've all changed. We're not what we were, but he doesn't acknowledge how much we can change. Hmm. Which, I mean, I guess in some ways he's right. As we were, we didn't really change much, did we? Some of us didn't. Then we got new bodies and we learned something new and we saw things from a different perspective. Sometimes that wakes you up, opens your eyes to things that, to be fair, things you might be ashamed of having done, you know? So what are you trying to do with your ministry? <sighs> and please don't bullshit me. I'm not I've had enough you. bullshit in this city. Oh, I bet you have. You met with Scratch, didn't you? So full of shit, his eyes are brown. I get it. What am I trying to do? Um, I mean, the main job of the ministry is just to gather information. So I do that. Now, what am I actually doing is, is a different discussion, but. And I know two of us here are associated with the Faustians. If you don't want to tell us, I respect that. But the simple truth is, I come back, get this new form. And it did change me. And looking at what the Faustians were doing in Chicago, I couldn't abide it. And then I come here and I talk to Scratch. <laughs> and as you say, his eyes are shit brown. Oh, he's just on top of the shit pile. There's a lot under him doing the same shit. Mm hmm. And the first thing out of his fucking mouth is wanting me to be the poster girl. For his endeavor. That sounds right. That sounds like him. You know, the one random fucking rare as fuck scourge that's a Faustian. Let's make her the poster girl. Now, let me tell you a little secret. First of all, he leans for, I was Faustian. <laughs> I know. You. I know that. I know the, the rumors about me. I was Faustian while we were in the abyss. But. I got this body, you see. Jonathan was unique. He loved his fellow man, no pun intended, but he loved all of his fellow men. He didn't believe in the discrimination. He didn't believe in the hate. He was killed by a random bum one night. The guy beat his head in with a brick, and as he laid there dying, he didn't even hate the guy who killed him. He just was sad that that humanity had come to that. He had a passion for life, and that passion drew me in. And I'll admit, that when I got in this body, there was a war between me and the memories that came with it. My anger, my rage, my hate. And it met this man's love, compassion, empathy, disappointment. And I'm proud to say he won out. Not me. I look back at all the things I did and all the things we did. 
it was horrible. We could place the blame on the first murderer. We could place the blame on Lucifer. No, the blame's ours, all of ours. We each made our choices. We each did what we did. It's not their fault. It's our fault. Own up to what you did. I was a sadistic killer, a murderer, torturer. Not anymore. It's not worth it anymore. That's not what we were made to be. Not what humanity was supposed to be. And now look at what they do. It's sad. But I don't agree with Scratch either. Our time's over. We shouldn't be shepherding humanity. We shouldn't be controlling humanity. We shouldn't be trying to mold them as we see. This is humanity's age. They should mold themselves. They should inspire themselves, not be inspired by us, not have faith in us. No, faith in themselves. Little things. Uh, Century City Plaza. Don't know if you've heard of it. It was supposed to be a, a miniature city where inside that little area, people who live there could get everything they need. It could be a self-sustaining little society. My goal, you know, let's start small. It was wrecked in the in the earthquakes and the fires and the riots. Uh, if you want to do an empathy role, Michelle, uh, that would be... Perception pull. empathy? That You can go perception empathy if you want. Yep, or you can do that. Love it. So if we start small, it was supposed to be an inspiration to Los Angeles that this is how things could be rather than this concrete jungle, but a living, breathing community of people. We shouldn't be leading them. We should put our efforts into building that vision that was built. Rebuilding it after the earthquakes, after everything that happened. And Mars, everything he says, he believes 100%. They're their own inspirations. The man who designed the plans for that. It was beautiful. Behind the scenes, we should make it beautiful again. Not for us. For them. So that they can see what they accomplished. That was their dream, not ours. I guess you could say I'm, I'm thinking back to the great experiment when we were the watchers. We stood behind, but we didn't directly interfere. We just encouraged them to be what they are. Not for control, not for power, but because that's what they should be. But now the million-dollar question. To what end? That's never for me to answer. That's for them to answer when they achieve whatever they set for themselves, not what we want them to do, we shouldn't be telling them. Why should we decide? That's their decision. Whatever they want to be should be their choice, not ours. That was the mistake we made before. We chose, not them. We chose. So they should choose now. We had our chance. We failed. We fucked it all up. Maybe they'll get it wrong. Maybe they'll get it right. But ultimately, it's what they choose to do. Who are we to, to, to force them to do something? It's not what we were meant to do. Never were meant to do. So what is your idea for what we are supposed to do other than just watch? We have is that to, all that you think we should do? We have to survive, so we'll always have to have a few that know what we are. If only to keep here to, to help behind the scenes. What can we do? 
We can watch. We can help in small ways. Things that aren't done for our benefit, it's for theirs. You know, help when they're, when they're constructing it. Keep our hand a little bit on the scales to make sure not many accidents, not many die from it. Little things we can do without revealing ourselves. Revelation is what got us into trouble in the first damn place. Now you can see why somebody like Ministry of the Oracles don't like me, can't you? I could see why a lot of the leadership probably doesn't like you. Yeah, we've got some tensions. Let me tell you, I think I've been called a uh, hopeless fool, uh, an optimist. Oh, I've been told I'm faking. Don't forget that. Uh, <laughs> nobody wants to believe the torturer has regrets. Oh, but do they look at you as soon as they hear who you are and ha have a literal pallor of fear? I don't know. Ask uh, Mars there. Yeah, I know. I saw her. I'm used to it, but I hope you'll you'll understand, and I hope you'll believe me. I can't force you to, but considering I was known as the mother, I do understand more than you realize. And do you regret what I did? What you did? I regretted that in the abyss. Mm -hmm. I regretted that when Lucifer killed those children. And you've taken your first step. You know how many of our kind don't think they, we've done anything wrong, they've done anything wrong, or they blame Lucifer, or they blame the heavenly host, or they blame uh, Cain. Far too many. Yeah. One of those deserves at least a little blame, just saying. We could have resisted. It was an excuse. An excuse with validity, though. I can't, I can't believe that. <laughs> Belief is a funny thing. Isn't it? So, there's not many of us in this city that have any ideas for the future, which is making it rather difficult to, to get any progress on Century City, I can tell you that. But, I do what little I can behind the scenes. And he gestures to the signs around him. Jonathan, this is what he was doing before I took this body. He died. I took it. But it was his dream. And I'll continue it. Most will not know anything other than I'm Jonathan Freeman. That's all they need to know. I will champion this cause in his name. And try to make some people's lives better. For them, not for me. And for him. Our time of dreams are done. I'll take a look at this Century City location. It's kind of wrecked now. Let well, me of tell course you. it is. Won't be the first wreck I've seen. They even emptied out the hospital because of the damage it sustained. Yeah. It takes money to put it back, but when you're trying to stay behind the scenes, uh, you can't overtly directly put the money in it. That's why you host fundraisers. That's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been part of some of those, though I'll admit most of the fundraising I get involved with is for mm -hmm. rights for those that are discriminated against. Yeah. She looks to her companions. Any questions from you all? Not at the moment. There's a lot to think about. Yeah. I'm assuming you don't have significant numbers if you're 
struggling with certain aspects of your faction. Look, you know what we are. The reconcilers are, there's not many of us. Okay. Even let's talk not outside the city. How many were there in the abyss? How many have you run into outside the abyss? Two now. You see, there are some. One of them. His name's Jeffrey Black. He's a cop. He doesn't have quite the vision I do. He's staying out of things. His only goal is to make his community better, to make his little, the blocks he lives in better for the people there. An honest cop in L.A. Think of that one. <laughs> That's a fucking miracle. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would fit where we were from. <laughs> There's not many of them around here. The corruption runs deep. Yeah. But he does what he can for his neighborhood. Not for his sake, but for the neighborhood. He don't get involved in the politics, though. Really doesn't even get involved much with the faction. But he understands where I'm coming from, and me and him have a pretty good understanding of things, you know? Do you think there's more of you than the Raveners? After what I saw on Devil's Night, there's no way in hell. Mm -mm. Pun intended. There's far more of them than any of us want to And then meet. you've got the Lord of Murder, a fucking earthbound. Mm -hmm. He was insane before the war. He's not gotten any better. Did we hear about any more details on Lord of Murder previous session, Storyteller? Nope. Okay, then can I legacy that name? Sure, you can legacy that name. I will as well. Okay. Hopefully, I, get I will a better, give it a go too. I'll get a better roll this time. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh my God. Really? Not. This is not my night. I got a big fat goose egg. So did Carsador. Look at that. This is the night. But not a botch because I had the successes for the ones to cancel out. <laughs> Now let's see what Mars got. Mars, you've got three. Um, his, the Lord of Murder was his title. His name was Manish Tusu. Um, you don't remember his house, not with three, uh, but he was always known during the war for his bouts of violence and lunacy. He was, to put it mildly, uh, I mean, angels weren't sociopathic. But he was a sociopathic madman. He reveled in the violence, glorified it, which is why he got the title the Lord of Murder. Bet the abyss really helped that attitude. <laughs> uh, I will tell you, he disappeared by your guess mm, 500 years ago. The juror just kind of goes, not good news. He's doing something weird in the city. He's trying to leverage religion with the gangs to create some sort of hybrid religious, you know, killing in the name of God group. Oh, military cult. They were pushing into to WeHo here. Uh, targeting, of course, uh, the gays that go around here. Uh, and so I, uh, I had to put a stop to it. I have to ask, how did you do that? Fortunately, we had to resort to violence. Yeah. That's I organized people. What I'm good at organizing, call it a neighborhood watch. Once we identified the gangs doing it, Everyone was on the watch for those gangs. If they came into West Hollywood, accidents happened. Not always killing, but we made sure between me and my bodyguard out there and a couple others, Jeffrey Black among them, that coming into West Hollywood didn't end well for gang members. Jail, 
Cars broke down a lot. Guns misfired. You know, bring violence and you get violence back, right? Did what I had to do to protect people. Because they weren't, you know, I talk about choice and all, but what they're serving won't give humanity a choice. Mm-mm. A storyteller. Yeah. Any way I can suss out his house? Or is that public knowledge? For who? For, yeah, for dear Jonathan here. Uh, yeah, it's that's public knowledge. He's a defiler. That actually tracks pretty well. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, think of what I told you, you know? We all have to make our choices. And we have to live with the choices we're making now. But I want to point out that we can't repeat our mistakes. I don't even think a lot of them realize they are repeating the mistakes. I think they've just never left it. I could wish more of them got... Someone like Jonathan. Yeah. I'd never felt that. I mean, I thought I understood love because we loved humanity. But his love for his fellow man was something else. He he couldn't even hate the man who beat his brains in. Just hated what had driven him to it. And now that I've been in this body a little while, I'm pretty sure that's rare. It really is. It is. Well, Virginia stands up, takes his hand again, and says, I am also glad that Jonathan won. Well, thank you. Hopefully, a little bit of Virginia has helped out the mother some. She's taught the mother how to actually be a mother. Well, that's important. By the way, Mars, love your music. I, I know who you wasn't, are. I wasn't sure if you'd heard. Wait, um, you're, a, you're a musician? Captain, Ob- really... Ca- Captain Oblivious. No, I, <laughs> she has no, a, clearly let's just say I'm... she has a following in certain crowds for sure. <laughs> no, I, I knew she was a musician. I was trying a joke. I failed again. <laughs> um, is that, was Clark, Clark didn't teach you humor, did he? Clark had a sense of humor. It was just sadistic. Mm-hmm. But thank you for the time and the explanation. No problem. Anytime you want to speak with me, just say my name. (laughs) Literally, right? Say my name. (laughs) Thank you. And Arizeth will walk out. And as you go to the door, uh, as soon as you touch the handle, it's opened up by the guy who introduced himself as Robin. And he eyeballs in and Vohu just nods. Y'all cool. Y'all don't need me to escort you out. Thank you. Before we leave, um, Mars just kind of tosses a mixtape towards Vohu. It's some new stuff. Promise you won't pre-release it. Wouldn't think of it. Do you mind if it plays here once in a while? Not yet. This is not finished. Oh, okay. Because we do have a just grunge night. for you only. <laughs> gay grunge come on you've got to come here for gay grunge night it trust me it's a treat only if girls are allowed we don't discriminate anyone's allowed as oh, long no, as you no. don't as I long mean... as you don't mind uh <laughs> seeing other girls grinding each other and a bunch of men in flannel <laughs> um that's flannel. that's more so what i was trying to ask but it's okay. <laughs> hey, you can bet that uh discrimination is not allowed and in this place. And as you all head out, 
I got a flash to Alice here. Uh, how long do you stay at the at the uh, the club? Uh, well, probably stay all night unless something happens. Okay, uh, Nix has a constant stream of people who come up to see her. I mean, there's easily two or three an hour that go to see her. Now, you don't know how many are demons, how many are people, but it seems like. Now, she's fairly popular in her little corner booth on the fourth floor. But do you ever talk to her at any point? Um, we'll make a sense congruence rule and see where that points. Okay, go for it. Let's see what you get as you try to see. What are you trying to sense congruence? Whether you should? Uh, I rolled, but I won't look at the result yet. Um, so her current fascination, I guess I would say, is really what what here would get her the closest to information about what the plan was and what happened to the heavenly host. You get nothing. Nothing. Oh, I got zero successes. So it didn't matter what I explained. <laughs> you got um, Okay. Yeah, I know it's boring, but she is probably isn't gonna isn't gonna go talk to Molly just because she's heard some things from like Arizeth about <laughs> like kind of like trustworthiness and like uh, I, that's valid. She'll probably keep an ear out in case she hears anything though. Like she might be sitting kind of close so she can overhear or try and overhear. Um, but not obvious about it, like <clears throat> not just sitting there. Towards the end of the night. One of the waitresses finds you. Uh, you should go talk to Molly. Any idea what about? I don't know. She told me to tell you that. Okay. Thanks. And as you come over there, uh, she's sitting at her booth, got her arms back on the back. Beautiful woman. Hey, doing, Alice? I saw you wandering around the place. Just looking, <sighs> getting the feel of the place. Have a seat What's for a minute. What's happening? Yeah. Got some info you might want. But. I mean, it's a question of whether you uh, what you can give me for it. What are you looking for and what's the info related to? We need some information to make a bargain. The info is related to you, my dear. You. That could be a lot of things. Oh, it could be. But unfortunately, given the nature of what I've learned, I can't say too much. But it, it is valuable to you. Maybe not to others. And what do you want? Hmm. What do I want? A little birdie told me that you were seen near the Griffith Observatory the other night. I tell you what, what? you tell me. I'm sure I can't get you won't give me specifics. A general idea of what went on, and I'll owe you one on top of this information. I was going to say, this is a pretty big thing. What well, do you already know, so I make sure I don't... Oh, I know I the Morning Star useful. was there. Okay. I could feel his true form from here. I think all of us felt him in his true form. Once you've tasted his true form once, you'll never forget that.
he's lost like so many of us. Interesting. So he's not infallible. I mean, clearly his plan didn't work. Well, then you get into the whole theoretics about was the plan never meant to work? Was that part of what God's plan was? Is his questioning now part of what God's plan is? You know, I tried that route once. Made my head hurt. It does do that. It's just the whole loop. If it was the plan, then when was it set up? And it just wasn't worth it. Is the it. failure of the plan? When is it not the plan? Is it ever not the plan? But if it was the plan, we were meant to fall. Then we didn't have choice. But I clearly remember the day of the rebellion. And the choices were made. There's a whole faction for this. I yeah, mean, I, no uh, one knows. <laughs> I will. But no, he's questioning. That is valuable. I will owe you one. On top of telling you, be very careful when you leave here tonight. Oh. Be very careful. Of? Your car is being watched at the moment. Some people intend to do harm upon you when you leave. What do they look like? I don't know what they look like. I've only been told that those who intend you harm are watching your vehicle. I don't always get clear information from all of my sources. Sometimes it comes in scattered, hazy. I have to try to make sense of it. And who's your source? Now, you know I can't say that. Come on. You can tell me, like, I don't need to know names. No, like... no, 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 no. Uh, a good information broker never gives up their sources. It helps give me an idea of, like, what types of information they would know. For example... If it's someone who's like a police officer, they would have information from that viewpoint. If it's a homeless person, they would have, I have information told you what, from that viewpoint. I have told you what I was told. Those who wish you bodily harm are watching your vehicle and waiting for you to come out. Alice is going to sense congruence on that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to use a faith. Dear demon powers, am I about to get mugged? And I have a specialty called danger, and I'm guessing this applies. Yeah, sure. I'll let you use that. Why not? Six. Six because, successes. Yeah. If you go anything. out and go straight to your car as you were planning, you will get in your car in a hail of gunfire, machine guns. Um, and as you use your power, she gets a smirk on her face. Sitting awful close for me not to notice that. I mean, you know, I have to check. Of course. And besides, get more information since you gave me so. And I will point out to you, uh, you have not once felt her invoke a lure this entire night. Okay. Alice probably doesn't put a lot of effort into detecting uses of lures. Just yeah, but you're kinda, close enough in the club. Yeah, you would have probably should've. sensed it if she did it more than once. Um. Yeah. So what Alice is going to do then um, is she is going to uh Go to like a front window or a window overlooking where her car's at. Okay. And she is going to um in her vision, was it after she started the car or just going out to her car? It was as you got in your car. Okay, we're gonna try this. We're gonna see how it works. Um, so she's gonna look out a window and she's gonna do a uh, phantasm and make it look like she's getting into her car. 
she's walking out and trying to open the door because it's an illusion. She can't actually open it. Um. Okay. So it's going to be intelligence and performance. Um, hmm. It's not going to be ghostly. You want a little bit more than that, but it's not various individuals. I'll say difficulty will be seven. Right between multiples and a single. Seven. Uh, acting specialty? Sure. You having them act like you? Sure. Um, okay. And then I will also use a faith for this one. because She wants to see what's going to happen. Boop. Two. Okay. I gotta roll something here. You had two? Okay. So as you do it, the the Alice goes to the car. When her hand touches the handle. From the shadows around the vehicle, six guys stand up. Five of them start shooting. The sixth one, you see him, you can't hear him, but you see him yelling at the others to stop as they unload into your vehicle. And the uh, one who so told we- him to stop looks around, and then the guys take off running as the club erupts in panic. So, 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 so before that, before that happens, because like, as remember from the last season was in Alice always carries around a camera. Um, she's going to take a picture or try to or, or record it. Actually, we're going to go with the recording. That's even better. OK, uh, give me dexterity uh, athletics. Because you didn't say you were pulling it out beforehand. You're actually concentrating on your lore. So let's see if you can how well you can get your camera out. What? The person who makes horror movies has recording equipment on them? Who would have thought? Right. Uh, so this one's a willpower, so she is going to do that. Okay, so uh, that gives you because one. Because I don't have athletics. Nope. <laughs> so you're rolling two dice from Dex. Oh, Dex, not strength. Dex. Mm-hmm. It's about how quick you can do it. Here. Two whole successes. Uh, you've got grainy image of them running away. You can't see faces. But you've got enough to the bodies. Okay. It's if something. you took it to someone who was a cop, they might be able to identify if they were gang members or not. I'm not saying who's a cop in the group. <laughs> but, you know, there's if you go down far enough, you look down deep in your soul, you might find one in the group. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh... And then you hear Molly go, well... I'm glad it's closing time because this place is emptying out fast. I guess my business is done for the night. Now it'll be in the news, though. Maybe it'll bring in more people. Oh, the people here Danger don't care. Seekers. And this is an exclusive place. Unless you're one of our kind. You got to have enough of this to get in. I let our kind in as a gift. Would you like me to call you a cab, dear? Sure. Um, sure. And she motions to the waitress, call Donnie over at Emerald and tell him, come get somebody for us. Take her wherever she wants to go. He can put it on my tab. You have well, a good night, Alice. I appreciate the warning. And we'll always trade information for information. Well, since I owe you, if you need anything, come back. Absolutely. And as Alice goes to leave, uh, right here, I think everybody, we're going to go to break. It's a good stopping point. We will see everybody in 10 minutes. Enjoy the break, everyone. And welcome back, everybody. Before the break, Tyrem Therizel, uh, I met with the Baroness. That went great, didn't it? She's a fanatic and a half. Carsador, Arizeth, and Drulirio there, they got to meet with, well, Vohumeno. Jonathan Freeman, who, if he's to be believed, actually has a, a rather nice vision for the city. And then poor Nabas. 
Somebody uh, took pot shots at her in a literal sense. But since congruence, when she knows to use it, helps her out. Do you let everybody know uh, about the, the shooting there, uh, Alice or Nabas yeah. afterwards? Yeah, yeah. She shows them the she shows them the video. Okay, so you all have gathered. You can't demon cell phone a video. So you all have gathered. Uh, where did you gather? Hotel bar again? Yeah, it's a nice bar. Safest place. Actually, I have a question. Yes. Can you, uh, since it's expressing thoughts? Can you relay memories over the demon no. cell phone? All you oh, can do okay. is, is speak to each other. Got it. Mm -hmm. Darn. And if you'll recall, you even have to actually speak, even though you can speak extremely softly and almost mumble it for people to, for the other side to hear it. So you all gathered in the bar of your hotel once again. It's late this time. Once the uh, video finishes, Clark will look up at you and just say, is the car salvageable? Uh, he, I mean, it's drivable. Mm. Uh, Matthew, you recognize the, the markings? That's the eight tray gangster crips. I pass that along. Yep, they're in South Central. Uh, awfully far from their home turf. And awfully specific who they chose to target. I mean, one of them wasn't purely human. I wonder if that's where this Earthbound is. I mean, would, look at all the violence there. Would it surprise you? No. But that's also, I'm going to remind the players, that's also the place you were told uh, one of the gangs actually defended their turf during the Devil's Night riots to prevent damage being done. Matthew, that's the same area, same part of South Central. Um, so regret might happen from this decision. Um, but can I sense congruence on where the Earthbound might be or show up? Of course you can. <laughs> try anyway of course you can <laughs> that hasn't gotten you in trouble before not at all i know especially because i wasn't even targeting the earthbound last time it was just an unintended consequence targeting it can't be bad yeah he already knows where she's at and knows of her existence it's fine we all know clipping a corner on a highway is dangerous enough but you're speeding right towards the the median this time <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Great choice of words. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna spend a faith. Okay, so that gives you one success automatically. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, danger. No. Duh. You're not <laughs> you're not checking danger. You're trying to see where they'll surface again. It's a dangerous situation though. I mean, yeah, he uh, is dangerous. <laughs> I won't push it. Four. Nothing. They will not surface at all in the next five days. Because it looks the number of days equal to your faith score. I mean, if it's a plus side, he's not coming out anytime soon. Well, it's not like he can't manipulate shit from right where he's at. Do we all feel that we're equipped to deal with Earthbound? Again? Again. We have before. Yeah, right. but this one is higher ranking. Yeah, it was highly recommended that we just don't go looking for that trouble. Yeah. But be, be prepared if that trouble comes. Sounds like it's coming anyway. Mm. Yes, but whether it's coming directly for us is another matter. Well, it My seems car so. was shot at. Yeah, because you kept poking things, right? That I had not poked that oh. yet. I was looking. I think that was for the sword at that point. Maybe. No, I don't remember what I was looking for exactly, but I was not looking for the Earthbound. You've hey. been looking for many things. It's hard to keep track of it all. You're going to do what you're going to do, and there's always consequences for actions. So believe me, I know. Did you yeah. get a notebook? 
I mean, a little flip note. That's what I use. I know where to go. That's what matters. Things connect. It could be multiple reasons why I go there. I'll know when I get there. I met with the Baroness, and she was unhappy that Lucifer does not want to lead us into a war. I want to roll legacy on the Baroness. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to spend a fa- uh, a willpower for that. Okay, you can do that. It gives you one success automatically. Mm-hmm. And because I'm getting real tired of the legacy rolls being hot garbage. <sighs> Real. No, it seems uh, Michelle there, Mars stole all the good rolls. That's what I'm talking about. I seven. got a six. Uh, seven. Yeah, yeah. seven. Uh, the Baroness, she was part of the Iron Legion. Um, she received multiple battlefield promotions and personal commendations from Lucifer himself. He is the one who gave her the rank of Baroness. Uh, during the war, she had a lover named Asher. Another demon, a defiler. Um, he was captured by the heavenly host and imprisoned in uh, Sagon, their prison city. She was forbidden by Lucifer to attempt a rescue and she ignored him. She broke into Sagon, the heavenly host's prison city, and rescued her lover. Hmm. Something that was Uh, it was spoken about by both sides as a her- very heroic deed. And as a matter of fact, uh, because of what she did, even Lucifer could not condemn her actions because she did it out of love for her, for the Asher. But she has never, in all her time she was in the abyss, never faltered in her loyalty to Lucifer. Except that one time. <laughs> she still had fealty towards him. <laughs> and you do know that, that you got a lot of roles. Yeah. Uh, your exposure to her during your time in the abyss, not once have you ever heard her say or acknowledge there might have been any wrongdoing on the Fallen's part during the war. No matter how horrible the act's done, she was perfectly fine with them all. No remorse. <sighs> yeah. And she just looks at to Renthrazel and just says, Yeah, I remember her. Oh, do I remember her? Her and the uh, the county sheriff's officer are spending a lot of time together. <laughs> I bet they came back together. <laughs> oh, they go way back. I bet. I'd bet money on that. That they go way back. Jeffrey Black and the and the Baroness. Yeah, Jeffrey Black. That's the name we heard tonight. It's a reconciler. Is it Sorry. someone we need to talk to? That doesn't fit, though. Sure, it does. Love's a funny thing. Not the way she's talking. You can't. I'm more of a reconciler now than I've ever been. And she is. No, she isn't. He is. No, I know. I can. I know that. But I don't see how they could be together. (laughs) Love is a funny thing. She is militant. Yeah, she always has been. Um, Outstanding general. Outstanding general. I can imagine she was a royal fuck up leading in peacetime, though. Let me guess. She's still wanting to fight the war. Yeah, she's never going to give that up. 
even though there's no one to fight. The heavenly host is shattered. God is dead. Or gone. Whatever. God has fucked off. <laughs> Who is she going to have war with? Maybe he can help us temper her. Maybe he can provide evidence as to who she's really trying to war with. If it is who we'd expect, or if she recognizes they're gone and wants someone else instead. Yeah. I don't think she would ever give up fighting. She would just find a new target. Um, and when I say the heavenly host is shattered, I, I do mean that to run the result. We, well, some of us met. What happened to them? What do you mean? It's Shard odd. Yeah, shards of their souls have attached to humans. And these humans become something more. So it's not like what what we've done. No, because it's not the complete entity within them. It's a piece. And that piece allows these humans to manipulate reality. That's dangerous. Oh, very. Yes. But Not creation too. itself seems to buck against. We did set rather specific design. Yeah. It's not to the extent we can. It's not to the extent mm -hmm. we can. And they have consequences for doing it too extravagantly. But that's what's happened to the heavenly host. That's why I say Scythe Man is not. <laughs> that he's fallen. So, well, so there were exceptions. I mean, are you considering, do you consider Earthbound and Lucifer fallen? Oh, Earthbound no. were certainly fallen. They were in the abyss with us. They just got out sooner because he released them. So I guess my point is, is there are different caveats. There are exceptions. We don't quite know all the, what the exceptions are. For all we know, we could be exceptions in some way. We could be the exceptions, Nibas. May, exactly. Maybe That's putting insane. us in the abyss protected us from what happened to the Shining Host. Could the Reaper cut off a shard of his essence and give it to a human to test the... Oh, he could certainly try. I feel like that would corrupt whatever human it was stuck into. Why would you want to give off a part of yourself? Wouldn't that weaken yourself? Doesn't seem like something he would do. He, if he's claiming to be part of the host still, that is the only way that we know. Hmm. You've seen this firsthand. They, they have shards within them, these mages. I don't think the heavenly host actually would have um, sharded themselves. <laughs> that, that sounds gross. <laughs> I think something catastrophic happened. Something so catastrophic that none of us were aware of because we were locked away. The only one that could corroborate that then would be Lucifer. Exactly. I will remind you, he told you that when he walked the earth, the heavenly host was already gone. But they he, were already gone when he walked the earth. Yeah, he never saw them from the day the imprisonment happened. He never saw him or a heavenly host member again. Mm -hmm. He told you that. But if... From the way he tells his tale, that priest he murdered was God that made himself mortal. What would have happened when a God made himself mortal? 
That would be pretty damn catastrophic, wouldn't it? Like his creation might have imploded. Wouldn't, wouldn't Lucifer have known if God made himself mortal? We are, and, and you keep saying his name. <sighs> yeah, I mean. He's going to be listening. Of course he is, but. I'll stop if it makes you feel better, I, but. Whatever. Like I said, you'll do what you do. Um, perhaps, perhaps not. He had rebelled. It changed him. We had rebelled, and it changed us. And she looks to Drew Lurial, well, at least most of us. If God made himself mortal and the first among us uh, killed him, where would his spirit go, Drew Lurial? If he was mortal, he... Would one of you have reaped them? No, no. It would, I mean, it might have. Maybe Scythe Man knows. Because I, we, we were trapped too. Like, could there have been a contingency? Was there a first of the last house that would have been said to reap? the creator but if they were shining host they would have been destroyed shattered and if they fell i doubt anyone would share such a monumental task that they were assigned it could also be a pretty big secret period that the creator was going to die if someone was assigned that role to begin with or the creator reaped themselves That's a little too esoteric for me, but. Do you still reap souls, Delirium? Where do people no, go when I... they die? Beyond the veil? <laughs> so wouldn't uh, it... God be there then if there was no one to reap him? If, if that's what happened, I could see about finding somebody to ask if you don't want a safe man because he's going in between all the time are there talking. others yeah i'm not talking to him he hates me are you, there others you you don't have to talk to him right now but i can talk to him at a later date he at least trust me okay are there other slayers you could also speak with gather more specific information Storyteller, I don't believe I'm in. You haven't with met any, any others. Other, uh, no. To be fair, a lot of your house didn't fall. I would I'm, like to roll I'm a legacy it. on Drew Lirial because she really seems to believe that she didn't fall. Okay. Well, at least I that I didn't rebel. Right, that you didn't rebel, that you fell by circumstance, not by choice. <laughs> so you're saying that Drew Lirial didn't fall so much as saunter vaguely downwards? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So I want to roll a legacy to see if I remember what she might have done that she has forgotten. <laughs> okay. Drew Lirial go down the hole. Well, this is certainly not a good omen. I can't spend a Change. faith on a mundane roll, can I? You can spend a willpower. Okay, I will spend a willpower then. I'll just be two in the hole, but... Willpower, the mundane faith. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> can, we, can we all roll? I mean, you could all roll. Uh, there's nothing wrong I've with that. I've just decided, you know, I've heard her say this a few times, and, and I'm just like, you know what? I want to see if I can suss this out. It's intelligence, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, boy. There go that is six. four. 
Okay. Four, one. Let's see, one from the boss. I'm also not going to roll for that. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as far as you know, she had revealed herself like the rest of you, but not during the big reveal. But as far as you know, she was upset that humans had feared death and had hoped to, because they were dying now suddenly when they weren't supposed to die. And she had hoped to be a shepherd to usher them to the other side. Of course, she lost access to the second world and was unable to perform that function. That's what I get. Yep. Okay, I will just have to interpret then. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> That's the problem with Slayers. They were confusing even before the fall. <laughs> as far as she was aware, she was still doing her job. But... She... Uh, Erizeth just looks to Drillerial and says, I know it broke your heart. Oh, for sure. That's why I identified with Mars. The, the feeling of of just complete hopelessness. When they feared the peace that you gave them, it broke your heart. But why would that make me fall? I wasn't able to recall everything. Maybe we weren't supposed to feel. Yeah. It, just it, ma it, it, it made you change. You revealed yourself, but you changed. You became a shepherd. You weren't before. What, what do you mean by shepherd? You started shepherding their souls to the second city. What would that mean for me, storyteller? Uh, the second city would probably refer to the second world, which is where the souls were supposed to go. Um, but at the at the fall, the souls, all the all the slayers, because humans weren't meant to die, originally. You don't know where the souls went. You don't know what was happening to them, which was the problem, and. Usul never told anyone because he was the son of the thunder. He was the, the sat on the sundered throne. He was the one in charge of the second world, and he would not say what where mankind was going. So, from the Slayer's point of view, they were dying and weren't going where they where you were supposed to usher them because you weren't supposed to usher them at all. So while I felt like it was my job. To do your job was to usher anything that died into the other side yeah. but maybe doing that for humans i technically wasn't supposed to do right because that wasn't your original purpose i'm sorry I mean, to be fair they weren't supposed to die at all no so. they i i know i know it, it a lot of things changed in quick succession and some of us adapted to those changes, and some of us didn't. Well, I'm going to have to talk to 
scythe man because i've got more questions <sighs> now but i can do that later were you able to get a read on jonathan oh yeah no he totally uh that was a weird thing so mars kind of like took over at first that was a really weird feeling so like seeing all of that support for you, you know what mars was am is it I'm really excited and happy to see that but then uh, immediately remembering who he was i was like uh no what it, that was weird that was really weird um but yeah no he he totally believes everything he's saying mm. like 100 percent. he and stands I've, by it and i thought i got poisoned by all of clark's emotions he was I'm very glad I didn't get that body. <laughs> it would have been. Why? Hell. There's. Oh, for you. Yes. Okay. I. Yeah. Far too many emotions. Mm. I. I already had a difficulty wrangling Clark's. I don't need more. Frankly, mm. I don't know how most of you can do it. And he specifically indicates. Uh, Erezeth, Julirial, and Nabas. And then he sort of half looks at Tyrem Thrizel, but gives a clear look of, I don't know if you count in that same way. But all of you seem to deal with these things so much differently than I do. Probably deals with what our initial gifts were. Malefactors were never supposed to have emotions, like none of us were supposed to have emotions, but I believe we were supposed to be even less. We were never supposed to directly interact with humans. It was never our design, never our purpose. We were to leave material tools, let them craft. Yet in the end, you did. As we so, all did. So you're just you were supposed to just leave a hammer with no instructions, no no lesson plan for whoever picks it up. I believe I believe our initial idea it. may have been trial by error. Oh, but I'm uncertain. Yeah, that explains I, a lot. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> there's no greater stress test in existence. <sighs> we all made sure of that. Yeah. It might have turned a farmer into the first murderer. <laughs> I was quite upset when that happened. Many of us were. It is hurtful to know that not only did it happen, and he'll look at Drew Lirial, and I'm certain your house was very upset. Cain spilled the blood of Abel onto the earth. The very thing we as malefactors were connected to. Mm -hmm. There are still malefactors that don't seem to hold the grudge against vampires that I do. And it still upsets me. We didn't deserve that poison seeping into the dirt. How, how are you connected to vampires? Cain struck Abel... If you believe the full story, it was with a jawbone of some animal. All right, so it wasn't like you left something there and then no. Cain was like, oh, this definitely goes in his head. <laughs> no, it was a representational sense of... So you didn't have anything to do with it? Not directly, but it was the things that we made that facilitated it. Yeah. The things that we made that caught the sin. I mean, even then, if even if it wasn't a technical made tool, it was in fashion a tool. A tool. And the one vampire I have had the luxury of confronting about it ran out of his store like a coward. To be fair, they probably don't generally go back as far as we do. <laughs> Definitely not. And they're still human, as I've learned. They're still human under all that scum. 
because he reacted just like a human when I showed him exactly what I was. That was glorious. <laughs> I wish it would have destroyed him, but we're not so lucky. No, what I find fascinating still, though, is that there are creatures that we did not create. I love that, though. I do, too. Technically, we didn't create the sorcerers, either. The sorcerers are still human. Are the wolves not still human, in a sense? They are not. They are not. They are something else. It would be interesting to know how they got the human shape, though. And would, it, would, it, actually... would it be? And, and, and Erza just looks at him with a very amused expression. If humans created the goddess that created them, would it not be in their image? As, as, as need... God commanded us to make humans and his they were like you like you mentioned i remember you mentioning in in nurse speak they were almost like t cells yes so of course they would they're look an like antibody what they needed to infiltrate right we're not talking about vampires anymore no we're talking about no. changing creatures where creatures oh. they're real yeah you mentioned them before yeah they're real. Nibos and I actually <laughs> met one. Didn't know what to make of us. Did not like us. Did not like us. And considering what... A lot of people don't like us. ...was released before any of the rest of us got out, I can understand why. Maybe one also, of them could. It was an instinctual dislike, if I remember correctly. Yes. It wasn't even just a, yes. I remember your kind. It was ingrained. It's ingrained. It's almost genetic for them. Hmm. It's like they adapt to the threats. It's fascinating. Do you think there's any way that we could meet this entity that was created to create them? I don't know. Maybe that's a project I can get started on while I'm here. Is it just the one, or do they have something very similar to a human's belief of the three in one? I don't know. It's Gaia? So singular? Yes. Sound God was singular. Exactly. But, but Gaia Jesus is, is feminine. The, son, the Father and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's something that's that... a human shape though. That's a right, but Gaia shape. is a human shape. Well, I mean, that's a human notion. Like you think of what we were told a couple of days ago. Where where's the distinction blue. though? Like why is there a distinction between the humans coming up with Jesus? The, and the Trinity was a whole Gaia? thing that the the one that your your group wants to lead them created. OK, he created the fucking religious bullshit. Yeah. So even if like <laughs> in concept, Gaia, like in lore has three parts, does it mean there's actually three parts? But I will I say I'm saying. It's a term for Mother Earth. And if there are wolves that were changed into something that is almost like a hybrid, there may be other creatures that were also changed. Creatures that roam Mother Earth. They created divinity that then created 
itself. And of course, many over how many generations have forgotten. Because with humans dying as they do and living such short lives, they forget things. I mean, was it even ever, was it ever widespread knowledge even? May not have been. Who knows? It could have been mages that created this. They had shards of the, of the, (laughs) the host in them. Maybe they did it. I'll have to find some wolves for myself. Also, the Lucifer that they are following is not the Lucifer that I follow. I forgave my Lucifer. So did I. We've all been dealt a pathetic and annoying hand. But I meant what I said. I would not follow him. I'm happy to work with him, but I'm not going to follow. Seems fortunate that he doesn't want followers. (laughs) After all those dinners of us cursing his name every single way. (laughs) Well, I'm going to make a call tomorrow to put my house on the market. So I'm not going to have Scratch buy me a house. I want nothing to do with that sleazeball. Um, literally, I'm, I'm so fucking done with him and all the bullshit of the Faustians. I'm really fucking done with their bullshit. They did enough fucking damage during the war. Um, there are cheap and decent housing in my neighborhood. I can I'm show ar- you. I've already done some cursory research. Need good school districts for the kids. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, so and when my house sells, it's in a good neighborhood in Chicago. I'll, I should have enough at least for a decent down payment. So. I think I'm going to go talk to Jeffrey Black. I can join you for that if you'd like. He does work with the, the sheriff's department, so he might be able to help with your video. Yeah. Give some indication. So, you're going to speak with Jeffrey Black. Uh, do you call him by his actual name? When I go to meet him, yeah. Well, how do you but, set up the meeting? I'm going to call him uh, like a human being. Okay. I worked for the sheriff's department. I used to be a cop. Like there's, there's avenues that I can take that don't include mental telepathy. He gives you a time. It's going to be in a few days. He's kind of got a caseload. He's kind of busy in. Sure. And as the days pass, I will tell you, In two days, you all, doesn't matter what you were doing, all of you find yourself pulled into a place outside of reality, drawn into the sanctuary. For you, Tyrem Drizel, you've never been there. You've never seen the halls, the halls of weapons, books, chambers, though you feel the very fabric of creation in it. For the rest of you, you know where you are. Aramel has moved sanctuary to LA. Arizeth's going to walk towards Aramel. And he's standing there. He has his head bowed when you come in. When he lifts his head up, you can see the strain that was on his face. She takes a coin out of her pocket and tosses it to him. And as it flies towards him, you see it shift. And it moves from a coin to a map to a globe. 
to a ball of creation as it settles into the wall behind him, a part of this very place. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see you made it. Uh, before we talk, you might want to go see your kids. Uh, the time slow effect and the time difference has been... I paused it while you were gone so that your kids would not have you gone for too long. But now that I've moved it, I can't expend that kind of energy in this place. Appreciate it. And she'll head off. And as you head off for that, we're going to end this episode right here, everybody. Because the next scene, well, you all have got some questions about the prophecy and the path. So rather than take up, push this episode too late, we'll stop right here. Because Mama's got to get up early. That's right. (laughs) And I'd like to thank my players and the viewers. Um, five XP for everybody. Ooh. Ooh. This is the season of XP. Wow. Everyone had right. some good scenes. Uh, I got to say, Drillerio, your roles were fucking on fire tonight. Yeah. You were stealing all the successes from everybody else at the table. <laughs> and you were on fire. And Nabasi, a clutch use of congruence. Because... Uh, I wasn't going to pull punches if you just walked out there after being warned. I was going to have you shot up. (laughs) If you didn't want to pay uh, Molly's price, I was going to have you shot up. That's the way that is. Uh, Thank you to the viewers. Thank you to the players. Please join us on our Discord. The cast of this show comes from Discord. The cast of all our shows come from our Discord. We've got a great community over there. we got nice people. We try to support each other. Uh, we also love to play games with each other, as you can see, uh, but that's where to be. We do Zoom hangouts when we can. I'll be fair, it's tough to do them when you stream Friday and Saturdays every week, but I know at some point up here, we're going to have a break where we're not streaming on a Friday or Saturday, and then maybe we'll do a Zoom that week. So that's all good. Uh, if you want to catch some back episodes of Kansas City, Windy City, uh, Demon the Fallen, Dark Ages, Chicago Hidden City, Jesus Christ, Changeling, Werewolf, Mage, everything except for Hunter and uh, Mummy. We've got it on our cha- on our, and, our YouTube. And let's be real, both of those, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, but we, I don't know. we got to find a Hunter ST because none of us, I don't run Hunter. I don't play. I don't want to play it. <laughs> Shit, let me, let me read I'll up on it. it and I'll do it. I'll run it. I've been reading it. Okay. I'll run it. You want to run a Hunter game? Find that I'll, in your schedule. For I'll having going. <laughs> Because you got the same problem I have. Where's the schedule? Yeah. Yep. But I'll run it. I got yep. you. So, uh, and of course, if you want to see D&D 5E or Call of Cthulhu, pop over to the London Esoteric Society's YouTube. I've updated the link finally. Yay! It only took me about six months after she told me she had a new link before I did it. But I did it today. I thought of it while I was It only took on her box. how long to actually update it? Um. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fair. That's fair. So uh, if you want to see some amazing content creators, you got Junie Von Esch. She is our, we- our werewolf storyteller for Queen's Gambit. She's our uh, Chicago Hidden City storyteller on Saturdays for Vampire. And, uh, well, she plays in a bunch of our games, too. So you should check that out. Uh, she does on her channel uh, knitting. No. No, I always crochet. get that wrong. Crochet. She, she does crochet and bitching. And she loves to, to bitch in general. And it's great. I would do it, too. Except I only stream RPGs. I, I saved my bitching for the RPGs. Uh, if you want to see uh, crochet, I hook. She hooks and bitches. Take that how you will. Stitch and bitch. Stitch and bitch. There you go. That was the word I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you can also pop over to Rerolls. You'll see him in Chicago Hidden City. You'll see him in Queens Gambit, uh, Kansas City. He has his own channel. He does a mage game on Tuesdays, I believe, uh, where you can even see Junie in it. She appears in that one, so pop over there. And then, of course, Mischievous Red, Nabas, who didn't get kidnapped so far, but did get a dr- uh, people shooting up her car. Let everybody know where they can find you and what you got going on. Yeah, I stream on my own channels occasionally when I have time and feel like it. That's Mischievous Red on Twitch, and right now I'm on a mini painting kick. I'm going to enter a competition, for because why not? Nice. Um, even though I'm not good, why not? Uh, Fingers crossed. Yeah. I mean, so many painting on Sundays or join the discord and you'll get notified that that exactly. And uh, look, 
nobody starts off good painting. It's a skill. You have to learn miniature painting. It takes practice, lots of it. I speak from experience because I've got some horrifying miniatures I painted when I first started that, frankly, I posted a picture on the Discord once. It's fucking horrifying. They're bad. Okay? Just saying. And then we got Ravnus Archon. Let everybody know where they can find you, Tyrem Threzel. Uh, hi, everybody. I have my own channel here on Twitch where I do TTRPG stuff that isn't Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, right now, we're doing mini series until the end of the year. Uh, we've got an Old Gods of Appalachia on Monday that's going to be ending. And then I'm going to be running a 1980s uh, Hunter 5th Edition uh, little mini series set in 1980 uh, Salem, Oregon. So it's a precursor to my Vampire the Masquerade game. You love your 80s games, don't you? I, I do. You're still stuck in the 80s, man. Come no on, let's get into phones, the 90s. No cell phones to help you out. Well, there's no cell phones in this one either, but you all got, you know, a demon cell phones. Really kind of takes all that fun out. Uh, you want to get you some studio merch, pop over to the merch store, sign in to do it so you can see our, our uh, camp, wish a motherfucker wood camp counselor. But other than that, yeah, pop over there. Uh, bits and donations, they go to the players, not to the studio. It's a way to give to the players and just a little something. If you want to give to the studio, pop over to coffee, subscribe on Twitch. You don't get ads, thank God. Because, you know, ads suck, especially on TTRPGs. And uh, a free way to support the studio, go over to the YouTube. Comment on the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. All that helps us on YouTube. Uh, we're not going to make money on this. We're actually coming up on the end of the year. Uh, and then I'll do another, as always, on the Discord. I am public with our finances. The state of the studio at the uh, when I finally file taxes. And you'll find out this is not a money-making opportunity here. But we do it because we love it. So... You know, free way to support helps offset a little bit of it. And now I can turn it over to my lovely wife for the schedule. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight for this session of Demon the Fallen, the road to hell, paved with the best of fucking intentions. Um, yeah. So coming up over the next week, we have Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, Queen's Gambit, Mage, the second session run by Ravnos Archon here. How fucked are your mages? On a scale of one to ten, like twelve. Yeah, I know. And you'll see red in that show, too. <laughs> Sorry, red, I had to ask. <laughs> it's expected. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I fully expect your Annie to be the one who gets fucked the most. <laughs> There's only four mages. So, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so join them Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, as they go to the second phase of their op and do what they need to do for this mission. And then Saturday, there is no Call of Cthulhu on Saturday. They reached their 100th episode and Tiss is taking a well-deserved break. Did they hit their 100? I thought that was next time. Or is it next time? It might be next time. No, I, I thought remember. they did 100. I don't know. Oh, shit. Uh, my yep. bad. This they, Saturday I'm is sorry. 100. I stand corrected. Redact that. We will have Call of Cthulhu on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern because they are playing session 100. And then Tiss will be taking a much deserved break because she has run 100 sessions of Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> Though she's already mentioned she's thinking of some some mini series to do yeah. other games yeah, while she, she's on break from she's, th she's thinking of some other games to run. So I you need to be part of the Discord so that you can possibly play at her table. I heard yeah. there might be a pirate game involved. Mm-hmm. Yar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why is the rum always gone? Because I drank it. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> Valid. <laughs> So that's at 3 p.m. on Saturday at Call of Cthulhu, London Esoteric Society. It is set in Victorian era London. The investigators are doing all the things that lead to insanity and murder. Um, so join them. And then at 8 p.m. on Saturday, myself and Maddox will be sitting at Junie's table for Vampire V5 Chicago Hidden City. We've taken down Jason Newberry. And Oops. nothing of value was lost. And nothing of and value, nothing was, of value lo was lost. Yeah, Jason Newberry's <laughs> dead. Oh, no, anyways. Anyways. Uh, but seriously, folks, 
if you ever want to see vampires be in a position of power as players and still have difficulties, this is a chronicle for you. Yes. I've never been I've never felt so strong and yet so useless at the exact same time. <laughs> but you're a Tremere. You should feel useless. <laughs> I mean, I'm useless to everyone that's not Tremere. <laughs> so join us at 8 p.m. Eastern on Saturday for that for the second part of our double feature on Saturday. And of course, we will be back here on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern for the next session, session five of Demon the Fallen. 8 p.m. Eastern. See you then. Yay. You know, hey, now they get to finally talk with Aramel again. And I'd like to thank everybody for coming. But as we end these streams, everybody, mental health is not a joke, not a laughing matter. I want you to take your mental health seriously and take the mental health of others seriously. Uh, check in on those around you. Make sure they're okay. Because I know a lot of people aren't. And sometimes all it takes is kind words, you know, of a friendly voice to be a, that helping hand they need to get off the ledge. And if you suffer from mental health issues, like many of us do, uh, first of all, it's okay to not be okay. But I want you to reach out to your support network. And if, you know, I understand a lot of people don't feel they can for whatever reason. Uh, in chat, there's a list of numbers. You can call or text 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There'll be a professional on the other end of the line. And if you are in crisis, please reach out to those numbers. If you're not in the U.S. or you watch this on YouTube, go to findahelpline.com. You can find out the support network is in your country and get the numbers so you can get the help you need. Because mental health is health, everybody. I know I want you to take care of yourselves and take care of each other. You know, uh, hey, Vohu Mano has it right. Humanity should be looking out for each other. That's all I got to say there. And now Mama can give her portion of the outro. And Vohu also has something else right. Discrimination is not fucking allowed here. That's right. As well as those who abstained, voted third party, or voted for the felon in chief that is soon to take the presidency. He's already creating his cabinet of fascists, y'all. He's talking about putting Matt Gates as the attorney general. He's already creating his cabinet of fascists, y'all. I mean, one rapist to appoint another rapist as attorney general. That's a great idea. Seriously, if you enabled this shit, get the fuck out of my fucking Twitch channel. Get the fuck out of my community on Discord. Get the fuck out of my existence. Yeah. For real. Um, and for those of you that didn't support and enable that shit, thank you. We really tried. Um, we got to keep trying. So we need you around. Please, please, please. If you are currently in crisis, which I understand if you are, there are disenfranchised and vulnerable people that are feeling very scared right now for legitimate reasons. And I understand. Please reach out to crisis support lines. Please. We want you around. We need you around. We need folks that are going to continue to fight for what's right and to fight for those that can't fight but also need what's right. Our disabled brothers and sisters can't give as much as we can, so we need to fight for them. Okay. Said with love to y'all, but to the fascist enablers, fuck off. Hope you die. Thank you for coming, everybody. And we will see you next stream, hopefully two days for Queen's Gambit. Because I'm sure nothing sus will happen to those players. Good night, everybody. <laughs>